G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. We're getting really close to our next trip, which is going to take us through Western Queensland, up to the Northern Territory, up to Darwin, back across to the top end of North Queensland, up to the Daintree and down the Queensland coastline once again. And we can't wait, we're so excited. However, before we embark on this trip, we've got a few jobs and tasks that need to be done. So this episode, we're looking to show you all, the, all those jobs that need to be done around our motorhome and the four-wheel drive before we can set off. So let's get into the show. But before we do, can I just mention, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. Give the video a like if you do like the video, and uh, that will help us out a lot. So uh, if you can do that, that'd be great. If not, that's okay too. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we can't wait to hit the road and make our way up to Darwin really soon. Okay, first job is a fairly big one inside the motorhome here, and if I can do this, anybody can so hopefully this all works out and uh and i can get this done for us but our srocco fan we had it installed before we left originally around about five and a half years ago and it has died on us that's it that's all we get from it so um it's dead we've bought a new one i need to pull this one out get the new one in there let's see how i go this is the original Sirocco fan. Uh, this is the new Sirocco 2. Now, with everything going on in the world at the moment, it was actually quite difficult to get a hold of one of these. Um, we did find Suncoast RV at Maruchador on the Sunshine Coast. They, um, they had some in stock, and at the time, we just got in, and it was $215. Usually, these are around about $189, $199. We paid $215, uh, and I've just noticed they're now up around $250. Bucks. So there's a real shortage on these at the moment. But this is the new Sirocco 2. So let's have a look at what we've got inside. It's always fun unveiling things like this, isn't it? You, uh, it feels like Christmas. Cool. So we've got our new fan and base plate. Screws are all in here. There's some double-sided tape we need. This should be fairly easy because we're not installing the fan, we're simply replacing it. So the wiring's already in place. Uh, there should be two wires, a positive and negative, in behind there. I just need to take those off, connect them to the positive and negative terminals on the new fan, um, and re reattach the base plate. And this is uh, some double sided tape just to ensure that it's aligned correctly. But uh, also it can give a little bit of cushioning to to, uh, to just stop that uh, too much noise, yeah, mm -hmm. vibration noise. So we'll uh, see how we go. Let's try and get this on. So the first part of this process is there's two screws, one either side here. I need to take those off. Okay, screws are off. now to detach these wires. Okay, we've got the fan off. So it's just these two simple wires. Uh, it turned out there were seven mil little nuts to, uh, to get them off. Uh, probably best just to finger tighten it. So if you ever have to take it off again, uh, much easier than having to try and get a spinner in there, which did take me a little while. I just put a little bit of tape on one of those wires so I knew exactly which wire it was. A little bit of tape there, that's telling me it's on the negative wire. So uh, when I hook it up again, as long as I put that one back on the negative, I know then that the other one is a positive 
and we're right to go. Okay, so we've got an original base plate on here, which I was hoping I wouldn't need to replace, but it seems that the, uh, the new plate, whilst it looks absolutely identical, there is a slight cutout on here. I'm not too sure why it, it uh, matches in with this little groove that's in here. And it wouldn't quite slide into place very easily. So I am going to replace the old base plate with the new one. Once we took off the old base plate, we had to connect. We actually found the old base plate didn't have any uh, any two-sided tape on there. So might have. Uh, hopefully, this will be a little bit less noisy than it was previously. But we've now got that on. Pull that through. Once I've got that screw on that end, I'll get one on this end, get it in place, I can push it up and that double-sided tape will hold it in place where it needs to be. Okay, so now I can just um, put the rest of the screws in and once we've done that, connect the wiring, put the fan on and hopefully it'll be working. Whenever my father did jobs like this, he always stuck his tongue out. So did my dad. <laughs> I wonder if that's what I'm supposed to be doing. It it's probably how you can tell I'm not really a handyman. Okay, they are all secured in. Now we're going to be the the original fan that we had up here. The turn on off switch was here at the end, so we were um, coming and connected there. With the new Sirocco two, the uh, the switch is here on this side panel. So I want that because we're lying in bed at night. We sometimes want to get up and turn it on, off, and make it faster. So I need it facing this side. What that means is that the positive was on this side last time. The positive wire is now going to be on this side this time. That's okay, but because we marked it, uh, put a bit of tape on it, and I know that's on the positive wire, it's not a problem. I know exactly which wire to connect. Put the tape on the negative. What do I say? Positive. <laughs> did I? I did. I put, and I meant to say negative. I knew what I was doing. We've connected it. I've switched it on at the power. The only thing we haven't done is put the two bolts back in here to hold it in place. Um, those two screws actually don't now go into the original hole, so I'm going to need to create some new holes. But let's do a test before we do that and see if it works. We're finding out with you, so we don't know. We haven't tested it yet either. No, I've got something wrong. Okay, we have to find out what we've done wrong. So turns out uh, just the switch at the board need to go on. Let's have another go. Well, 
Boom. And that is a lot quieter. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a Sirocco fan, these things are awesome. They um, they give really good breeze. They're quiet, and they have very low draw. They're actually originally built by the marine companies for boats and marine craft and uh, they're now used in RVs and they really are just the best fan you can have in, in your RV whether it's caravan, motorhome or whatever so um, absolutely perfect running well I now need to just put the two screws back in here and we're all done next job we have got ourselves finally a water bladder we've been wanting one of these for ages so we have to fill the water bladder up and we need to put in five percent vinegar which uh, the bladder is a hundred litre bladder so we're going to need five litres of vinegar which we don't have we've only got two litres so what I'm going to do is fill this up with 20 litres of water and then just give it a good rinse out with those 20 litres so we'll do that. First of all, I haven't opened it yet, so let's open it up, see what we've got. What we're doing is, we have this one, which is uh, 30, 32 mil inlet valve. Uh, that one goes here in the top, O-ring on. see putting that onto there now that this obviously remains open so what we've got next is this piece of clear plastic tubing and that goes into this which is a, a valve close off valve so you can see now it's completely open turn that oh, wrong way and it's shut so that will shut it off or open it back up when we want to put water in we'll go on there before i do that i will need clamp And clamp two. So I'll put a clamp on this end. That'll keep that plastic tubing on nice and tight same on this end so that's shut off now underneath here same thing And what we have then is this one. There we go. And now this ends on. We can simply connect our hose, this end, 
once again we've got an open and shut valve so once this is full connect the hose here run that to the motor home our water tank is lower than the four wheel drive so we'll just simply be able to gravity feed that from the bladder now into the motor home now all we need to do is fill the bladder with water and vinegar and uh, and that have a bit of a soak then rinse it all out and we're right to go what about it that's going to give us another 100 liters of water we've got 100 liters in uh, collapsible containers we've got 100 liters in the bladder 100 liters in the motorhome it's going to give us 300 liters a lot mm, yeah. awesome okay next okay. task is inside here in the motorhome and this is a perennial problem that we've had the whole time we've owned our motorhome it's a 2009 Winnebago Esperance and all these Winnebagos that were built around this era uh, behind all the doors and the drawers are plastic latches that hold them in and this is it this is a black there's a latch on this side and here and they are terrible they just break all the time this one has been broken for mm. a long long time quite a while, <laughs> quite a while. so it was uh, probably over 12 months ago that we replaced we got sick of replacing these over and over and over we went looking for another option we found this one and we've had this in here for over 12 months now and it's actually worked quite well we haven't had any issues with it um, and I might resort back to that yet if this doesn't work out but we've decided to go a different way today but it'll depend on whether this one works I'm not sure yet first thing I'm going to need to do is take this off and once I've taken those off I can see if uh, what I want to do is going to work okay so what I've got instead is this magnetic latch so it's going to hopefully sit in here I can put the other piece on here and it'll close and it'll actually be a magnetic latch this is a 65 millimeter and it's for three kilos so we've tried to guess what size is going to be ideal for this um, ideally I only wanted to use one did consider having uh, two smaller latches either side but that just meant Light, more lining up and more potential issues so I've gone with just one latch a little bit bigger and I think this is going to be strong enough to hold the door and the only question is this is on an angle uh, but I think this comes down on that angle to match anyway so I should be fine so this is what we're going to go with uh, let's give this a try see how we go okay so these are the design and what happens is uh, this black latch in here just forever is either breaking or Adele or one of us needs to come in here continuously and actually open that clip up to try and get it to work again and it only works once whereas uh, it's supposed to open and close after each use. Okay we've taken the latch off what I want to check now is contact. Yep. So we've got full contact with the door to that frame, which is what I was after and needed to know. Now if that's going to close up fully, the latch should connect just fine. Now I'm going to be creating new holes for these screws so I'm going to use the drill for that. I'm not pre-drilling the holes because I want maximum amount of grip with that screw into the timber. Now that's on nice and firm. Now the challenging part is going to be lining up the latch here and the clip and what I'm going to do is I've put the screws in the uh, in here and I'm going to attach the plate onto the latch 
and you can see now I've got these screws sticking out so if I make sure that those screws are straight like that I should be able to close the door down give it a bit of a bang and that will now leave me with two impressions here that uh, I can see and uh, and that tells me exactly where the screws need to line up okay I need to make sure I don't go all the way through here and out the other side so I'm going to start it and finish it with the screwdriver It shouldn't, I've tested it, it shouldn't come through the other side, but I just want to make sure. Oh, there it is. We had to play with this a little bit. I had to adjust the latch here and bring it forward and the plate. We had to put some backing in behind that. Um, and now we've got it touching and it is working. So it's working quite fine. Uh, would I go that way again? I don't think so. I think I'd prefer this one here. Uh, we've had it for quite some time. I'll leave this because, and, and we'll know over a period of time whether which one does work best, but this one's always worked well. Uh, it's a simple plastic clip. And one thing that's good about it is when you put this in, you can adjust that either way. So if you get it slightly wrong, you can play with it a little bit quite easily but uh, it's worked well over a period of time and it's really cheap as well so um, I think I would probably go that way and it's just sitting a little bit more flush this is protruding a little bit so I think over time we'll probably end up taking this metal plate out and putting one of this one into here but uh, we'll give this one a go for a little while see uh, see how it goes long term and then we can make a final decision but there's the two options for replacing uh, these black latches that come with the Winnebago that are, are just useless absolutely hopeless so uh, there we go there's a couple of options but uh, at least we've got these working now this is holding and that can go in the bin next job was off to see my mechanic Dom from Sportivo Automotive the Triton needed a timing belt change and was due as service. The timing belt wasn't actually due for another 7,000 kilometers, but that left us potentially needing it done on the road. Our bash plates were a bit of a challenge getting off. We lost our original bash plate on Fraser Island and had these ones installed by ARB at Harvey Bay. I preferred Dom do all my mechanical work and having the timing belt changed before we left meant it was one less thing to worry about while we were away. Dom showed me the timing belt and all the other parts he had replaced. He also checked the water pumps and they were all good. Sportivo have been looking after us for over 15 years and serviced both the Triton and our motorhome. Apart from that, I know I can trust him. He's always fair in his pricing too. Sounds good. <laughs> After getting the bash plates back on and doing a test drive, we were good to go. The last few jobs were to wash our mats and to do some shopping, making sure we visited Uncle Dan and the big green shed. What have we got? Chrysanthemum pot for your mum for Mother's Day, early Mother's Day. Mosquito coils for when we get to Darwin. 
and a replacement um, inline water filter. We visited our mums and sons and gave them all big hugs. Finally, it was off to get the verdict from Kev's GP. With the tick from his doctor, we decided to leave that afternoon.